Are you looking for a simple Bible study method that doesn't require more than just your Bible and a notebook? Well, I have the method for you today. My name is Amanda, and I encourage people to see themselves through God's lens and not their own. But the only way to know your identity in Christ is to know the Word of God. So today I want to share with you a simple Bible study method called the devotional method. This method involves reading a passage, meditating on it, and then asking the Holy Spirit how to apply it to your life. This is a great method to use when you don't have a lot of time, and it doesn't require a lot of other resources like other study methods. This is also a great method to use if you're traveling, because again, it doesn't take as much time and you don't have to pack up all your study materials. I like to use this method when I don't have a lot of time to study or when I don't want to go as in depth with my study time. This was a method that I had learned a few months ago when I was really researching different study methods. I liked that it was simple and I liked that it was different than other study methods. I really enjoy reading devotionals, so I enjoyed learning the devotional method of study. Today I'm going to walk through the devotional method with you using Philippians 3, 12 through 16. Now when you're choosing scripture for this method, use whatever reading plan you have or whatever you felt led to study for that day. All right, so we are going to walk through the devotional study method. And before we start any Bible study, the first thing we need to do is pray. Even if it's not written in the actual steps of the method, we always need to start in prayer. When we start with prayer, we're asking God for wisdom. We're asking God for guidance. We're asking God for revelation, for understanding, for clarity, interpretation, all of that. So always start every study with prayer. This is God's word. So we need to go to him first before we begin any study. So the scripture I said I'm going to walk through today is Philippians 3, 12 through 16. So I'm going to write that in my notebook, Philippians 3, 12 through 16. And the steps of this method are read it, and not just read it once, but read through it several times. Meditate on the verses. Apply. How does this apply to my life? An added step is to memorize a scripture, either the whole passage or a scripture from there that really stands out to you. And then we always end in prayer. So we begin with prayer and we end with prayer. So if I'm looking at Philippians 3, 12 through 16, the first thing I have to do is read it. And I recommend reading it out loud. I know for me, when I read scripture out loud, I tend to understand it a lot more and a lot easier than when I just read it in my head. So what I'm going to do just for this video is read through it one time out loud. So Philippians 3, 12 through 16, and I'm reading it from the New King James translation. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. So what we need to do is read the passage. And I'm just going to make a note of that in my notebook. Read the passage several times. So after I read through this one time, I'm going to read through it a few more times. You might need to read through it three times, four times, five times, however many times you feel that you need to read it, that's how many times you should read it. And after I'm done reading through it several times, the next step is to meditate. 
And when you are meditating on scripture, what that means is that you are thinking on the passages over and over. They say it's ruminating on the passage. So you're processing it in your head. You're thinking it over and processing as you're thinking about it. So what is the Holy Spirit revealing to you about this passage? Ask yourself some questions as you're meditating on it. What does it reveal about God? Are there any instructions in this? Are there any commands in this? Are there any sins that I need to confess? Is there any attitudes that I have that I need to change? What does it reveal about me? So you're going to be thinking on these things, you know, meditating on this, thinking on these things. What is this scripture revealing to me? What is this scripture telling me? What am I understanding from this scripture? And then after you're going through that meditation of it, consider rewriting the scripture in your own words. Write it in the way that you understand it. Write it in a way that shows your comprehension of it. If you want to, put your name in that scripture and look at how it is talking to you. Look at what God is saying to you. The next step after you have meditated on this, and that might take you a while depending on you know, how well you're processing it. You may have to read through it a few more times and meditate or go even scripture by scripture and meditate that way as well. So maybe, you know, this one I chose five scriptures and maybe that is too much to meditate on as a whole. So I might go scripture by scripture. So starting with 12, not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. So I've read it and now I'm going to meditate just on that scripture. What is it revealing to me? And then I'm going to write that out in my notes. And then I'll go on to the next scripture. So that's another strategy if doing all the scriptures from the passage at one time is too much. Go scripture by scripture, you know, verse by verse. After I have done the meditation part, the next piece is application. So application is, this is when you need to see what the Holy Spirit is revealing to you about how to apply this to your life. And that's when you can go back to the meditation. You know, what is, what is God revealing? Are there instructions or commands or sins that need to be confessed or attitude that needs to be changed? How can you apply that to your life? How can you apply this scripture to your life? And that's why you have to go to the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you. And then start writing out what the Holy Spirit is revealing to you and how to apply it to your life. Then after that, you may consider um, choosing a specific verse in there to memorize. So maybe there's one that really stood out to you or that you really want to focus on. Um, so maybe I would, um, for example, like 14 says, I press toward the goal. For the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So maybe that's the one that I want to memorize. So I'm going to put, you know, Philippians 3, 14. And I would write it out. And you might also write it on a note card. Whatever method you use to memorize scripture, that's what you need to do. So, you know, write it out. And then that's the scripture that you need to focus on memorizing. And the memorizing is not a requirement of this method. It's just an additional piece of the method that um, it wouldn't hurt to memorize it. And after you have done all of that, the last part is to pray. Pray and ask God how to practically apply this scripture to your life. How to practically walk out what you have read and what you have understood. The revelation that you have received from this, how to practically apply that to your life. Ask God for his help, for his wisdom, for his strength. Again, we always begin with prayer and we end with prayer. 
And one last thing that I want to add is it is okay to read this in multiple translations, especially when you're doing the reading part. Maybe the one translation you have, it isn't necessarily making a whole lot of sense. So you may consider reading it in another translation or more than two translations, depending on how many translations you use when you study. Generally, when I'm doing my study, I always start in the New King James translation. And then most times, I would say 99% of the time, I use my Amplified translation after that. And then sometimes, depending on what I'm studying, I will also read through the NLT translation and the message translation. So again, that just depends on what I'm studying, how long I have to study, all of that. So you may consider using another translation in your study time. So I hope this gave you some insight into using the devotional study method. If you use this method, comment below and Tell me how you like the study method. If you don't use a study method, go ahead and tell me if you think you might use a study or if you think it might be effective for you or not. Because again, every method is going to work differently for every single person. We are all created differently, uniquely. And so not every study method that is presented is going to work the same for every single person. That's why I have been presenting a variety of study methods so that you can find one or more than one that works for you. So thank you again for watching this video and have a blessed day.